It's election season and things are steadily heating up in Ghana. Right now, the NDC flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama, is crisscrossing the country, selling his message of hope and rebuilding Ghana. In the rear is the deadline to announce a running mate. On Hot Issues today, we ask, who could Mahama's number two man or woman be? Does the former president even have what it takes to wrestle power from the NPP? Must the strategy for the win change with the entry of the likes of the Butterfly Movement and the New Force Movement? I am Kemeni Amano, and today I sit with a stalwart of the NDC who has dedicated much of his life to the party and his country. He has served in government in different capacities from as far back as 1997 when he occupied the newly created communications ministry. Since 2006, he has made several attempts at the top job in the country. None were successful. But could he be running mates to John Dramani Mahama? Former Trade and Industry Minister, Dr. Eko Spiogabra, is my guest on Hot Issues. Doc, you're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you so much. The current worsening economic circumstances of our country under the failed Akufuado Baumia administration demands that individuals and groups such as the NDC adopt new and radical economic measures that will help to dramatically change the current sad global narrative in Ghana. In Ghana. If that is familiar, that's because it's you. You wow. said that. Impressive. The, the administration of today will say that it's incorrect because things are turning around in the country. So why do you say this? Oh, I mean, as, well, as to whether things are turning around or not turning around, depending on how you like to do your research, um, some people will say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, Ghanaians are used to the phrase, in three at least, meaning take cognizance of your own circumstances mm -hmm. and determine whether if it's an election year, as it is now, you should vote this way or that way. And I think if you just go by what Ghanaians are saying on the streets, just you know, normal parlance, short, short talk, topics, as a taxi driver, as market women, what they are thinking, that's one way of researching it. But you can also go by global analytics, mm -hmm. which is now a very highly respected and well-established uh, research uh, company, which has provided numerous reports on different aspects of Ghana's performance vis-a-vis -vis other African countries. Mm. And the outcome is clear that we are in, uh, on a downslope. I mean, uh, is, any, is anybody here in us not aware that Ghana is a bankrupt country? Ghana is a bankrupt country by any other financial measure or indicator. So if you are a bankrupt country and are now trying to work your way out of bankruptcy, does it require too much of a, a philosopher to say something similar to what I said? Well, the, so the, what I said was very light, very, very light. I, I, the disaster, again, I, the disaster that the Ghanaian economy is facing, the depth of the, you know, malaise, that, that is the financial misbehavior that has gone on for seven or more years, the corruption that has become endemic throughout the whole country, the poverty that it has led to. The World Bank, African World Bank, international organization, they're all aware. Mm. So I don't know, I, I need to persuade anybody that things are very bad in the country. Very right. bad. They, they, they Doomsaw we has come back. Doomsaw. Mm -hmm. uh, in my house, half of the time, I don't have lights and power and electricity. And most homes are experiencing the same. Mm. But nobody is going to pretend that, um, well, the word Doomsaw should not be used because now it was used when it was a matter of, you know, tariffs and all that. Doomsaw is back with a vengeance. Mm. We're going to look into some of those matters, yes. but I, I, you know, the administration will argue that things were bad, as you're saying, but today uh, they, they're doing it better. Today the yeah. things, are, things are improving, and some of these world organizations that you talk about have backed up that. We've heard the, heard the World Bank recently say they're happy about how things are turning out in Ghana. Well, right that's now. what the World Bank will do, will say. I used to work there, so that's what they will have to say, because they have given us money through the IMF. They are all part of the same Bretton Woods institutions, the IMF, the World Bank Group, the International Finance Corporation, that's where I worked, have a, a reason to be saying the right things or at least positive things about Ghana. Because their money is now here. When we, they didn't have the you know, $3 billion 
loan that Ghana has taken from the IMF, they could say something else. But they, are, they now have skin in the game, mm. as you know, Europeans or Americans would call it. And so they have an investment in Ghana, and they must therefore prop up the economy with language, with reports, with conferences that say the right things. So their money doesn't get so, so, so they, bad. So they are patting our back for their own benefit. Of course, they do that. That's part of that system. And that's part of the work. I used to, I was in communication, as head of communication at the African Environment Bank. I was, you know, the only black person in the communication department at International Finance Corporation mm. 30 years ago. And that was part of, part of my job, to make sure that that institution said, said the right things about certain countries which were their, you know, clients. I see. If you're not their clients and you're misbehaving, they'll say the wrong things about you. But the government so is call, having call the, the Ghanaian the, people believe that as well. The government is having Ghanaian people believe, believe, what? believe that, that things you know, are getting are, better. Yeah. When you go to the market and the, the price of goods have doubled, doubled and tripled, when he, your children are going to secondary school or whatever, and you have to have a long list of 20 items that the school says you must buy, and almost all those items will cost you two, 3,000 cities, even in a so-called free education system. I mean, I don't know who needs to <laughs> convince who. How many times have fuel prices gone up in the last seven years? How many times have your medical bills gone up in the last seven years? I mean, no, Doc, all Doc, consumers are, you, are, are aware. Are you saying that all these figures mean nothing? No, it is, like uh, inflation uh, no. taking a downward slope but, month on no, month? Of course, if your inflation is over 50%, which even a, a certain um, US-based economist kept, you know, providing the figures. When Ghana says inflation is 37%, that US economist would say it was almost 100% at different stages. So if your, if your inflation has come down from 50% and it's now 30% or 40% and you think that's progress, then yes, that's progress. But compared to West African countries who have had you know, single-digit inflation for 10, 20 years, they don't, they, they won't, they won't understand you. Or other countries in the world, very few countries have more than 10% inflation. Even the European countries which have had increases in inflation in the last, since COVID times mm. and since Russia-Ukraine war, which tends to be the main, uh, you know, excuse of the, the government, even those countries are still in single-digit single inflation. It is very, very difficult for you to have double-digit inflation, which Ghana has had for quite a number of years. But under the NDC government, certainly under President Mahama and before him, President Mills, we had en en enjoyed single-digit inflation for many months mm. under President Mama and the President Mills with du Dufo as finance minister. Right. So we've had that experience before. But when you're spending more than you, cre you generate, there's a problem with this economy. The government with a budget that should be modest tends to spend far more than it can generate. And they're always on the backs of the Ghana Revenue Authority to bring us more money. Now we are going to pay higher value added tax, mm -hmm. I understand. There's a new support uh, 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 from 125 to 15 percent, etc. Our, our gold exports are probably going to increase by 10 percent or 20 percent. Uh, oil revenues are going to increase by 20 percent, and other you know manufactured goods are going to increase. If all those figures are mm. positive, then collectively you can have higher output. But then your expenditure patterns must change. You can have a, a, a government and a president which wants to build a national cathedral. Have you heard that the national cathedral project has been? Has been cancelled, for example. Has it? No, I'm asking you. No, I will. But you, I you, should, you, should have, you should hear it. If you hear that National Cathedral project has been cancelled, then it means that the government is, is getting into a sensible environment and cancelling projects that they know will never happen this year under this government. So cancel it openly and let us know it's, it's cancelled. And then your budget will reflect that we are not putting money into National Cathedral. We are not putting money here or there. But if the presidency itself has doubled this budget in the last budget cycle, and as employ, is employing more people than they did last year, who are, they, who are they employing the people for? This is a national election year. So we understand if the Electoral Commission has a higher budget, we understand if a certain number of organizations have a higher budget. But if the budget expenditure is in the wrong direction, mm. and following, it's not for road improvement, it's not for agricultural improvement, it's not for improving the livelihoods of Ghanaians, it's just wasteful expenditure. If the president tells us that before he leaves office, he will never fly again in an $18,000 an hour plane 
He hasn't made that commitment. He should make it. Well, but he, 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 he hasn't done that. No, he does not. To the matter. best of our knowledge. Well, so world. we don't have to be chasing him to find out. He must just say it. He must declare it. The president can issue that statement. Mm. I used to be Minister of Communication for this country. And I used to advise President Rawlings on a number of things. And if, I were, if we had that situation, I'd tell President Rawlings, please, issue a statement that you don't intend to do this anymore. And you, you do it very quickly. I, I wanted to, you know, hit a point on, on you know, the, the conversation around governance. Very good. A, a, a part of the court said that we needed uh, radical yes. uh, economic measures to yes. dramatically change the uh, current sad global narrative. Very what good. would the MD, NDC have done in this uh, situation? Well, <laughs> I'm not the NDC candidate for anything, but I have been an NDC uh, minister and even though we are yet to complete putting together our manifesto for 2024, um, and you're asking me a question that really deals with economic measures, I don't want to, be a, to pretend to be a spokesman for either the party or for the future government of NDC, mm -hmm. so we must understand that I'm right. only a, an individual, so I'm, mm -hmm. I may have an opinion. But it's what you have heard, which guardians also have heard, is NDC's plan under President Mahama as the incoming president to run a 24-hour economy. So if we just want to talk about that as an example of what NDC will do, then that's fine. Is that because radical enough, the 24 it's, it's very radical because we are going to put in place policies which we've not had before that will govern how people work, when they work, how they work, and, and what industries get particular regulations and legislation to support them in the changes that are going to take place. There are over 20 industries, 20 sectors of economy that will all be affected by the 24-hour economy, whether it is markets, whether it is manufacturing, whether it is tourism, whether it is the security services and the police, they will all be affected. So it's a very radical and fundamental shift in even the thinking. The fact that I, I can think that I'm not working, you know, eight to five, which is the language we use for people like us who may work in offices, but I'm now working 12 to seven, 12 midnight to eight, 8 a.m. Somebody tell, ask you, you oh, what are your working hours? We will start hearing Ghanaians say, oh, I'm working midnight shift. I'm working third shift, which is maybe 4 p.m. to midnight in a particular company. So we are asking people, companies to think through their work schedules, think through the transportation requirements that their, their staff will mm -hmm. need, whether they need buses. Hopefully, eventually, we'll have rail lines and rail cars. We are asking people in neighborhoods where they lack adequate security for themselves so people can come out late at night or come early in the morning because they are not comfortable. The security services will have to be deployed in various ways to make the 24-hour economy successful and to work. Infrastructure, there are vans or buses that are riding right. in the daytime when they should wait and be moving mostly at night when traffic is, is lower. Let's shut Construction work that takes place in the daytime and disrupts you know, road users may have to take note of this and deploy themselves at night when traffic is low. All kinds let, of things let, that let's, happen. Let's chat a bit more about yes. the 24-hour economy and other doing. NDC matters okay, when yes. we come. Don't go away. Welcome back. My guest today is Dr. Ecospiu Gabra. Doc, while we're on the subject of the 24-hour economy, uh, one would ask, how would that be addressing uh, the, the current state of, this, of our economy? How would they be addressing the issues of, our, of the current state? But of the current state of economy in, in requires the creation of jobs, right? So one of the things a 24-hour economy does, which is just what we dis discussed, is allowing people to work at different times of the day. The same 24 hours, God has only created 24 hours for all of us. We, none of us have more time than the other. It is how we utilize the time. So if instead of working eight hours, that's all you do, you can increase your work and the output also by at least 20% or 30%, then in theory and in practice, you are increasing your productivity as well as your production um, of goods and services. And if you apply that not to only your individual self, mm -hmm. but to companies and enterprises nationwide and to the world, which will also know that if you want to do trading with a Ghanaian company, a Swazi company wants to export to Ghana, a Egyptian company wants to buy from Ghana, they know that the company you are going to buy from in Ghana works 24 hours. Therefore, you don't worry about the time. You can call them, you can send them fax, send them email, and they will respond almost immediately. That changes the economic paradigm almost immediately. 
So that is why the 24-hour economy is so critical. It's, 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 that's where mindset change. It goes into policy changes. It goes into legislative changes. It goes to acts of parliament that addresses all these 20 or more industries that will be affected. And it, it goes to the workplace changes that companies and industries have to adapt mm. to take advantage of the opportunity. Do, yes. do you feel that uh, you know, the party is selling the 24-hour economy well enough? Is, are people sold on it? Well, it could be, it could be more sold, but a recent survey by Global Analytics, the same company I'm talking about, has, uh, has demonstrated that over 54% of Ghanaians believe that the 24-hour kind of economy is the highest or the, the most um, remembered, if you like, slogan or policy initiative of all the policy initiatives that any political party is talking about today. But they could sell That's it how effective it is. Yeah, but talking about it now is part of the selling it better. I see. Mm -hmm. Let, let's, let's move away from the 24-hour uh, economy and talk about the NDC uh, generally. Do you think the NDC is able to win the elections 2024? <laughs> uh, at the current state? At, at, the, at the current state, mm. we don't want to be overconfident. Mm. And we are very, very sure that, um, and we, are, we advise our own um, colleagues not to be overconfident at all, because the opponents we are, if you like, competing with are known to use, utilize in any range of underhand techniques, starting from things that they do at the executive level, things that they do at the legislative level, things that they do at the judiciary level, things that they do at the electoral commission level, things that they do with the media, things they do with the chiefs and opinion leaders. They have, and even with the pastors and, and all that. So they are masters at any number of games mm. that political parties can play. Are you on the Mahama campaign team? Um, as an NDC member, by definition, I'm a, I'm a member of the Mama campaign team, but the team itself, of course. The core team. No, there's a core team of people, and I'm not a member of that team because he. Why? You didn't make yourself available for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm more than available. He knows, that, he knows that too well. Why do you think but, he didn't call on you? Oh, he has people that he wants to work with at different times for different purposes. And so I wasn't on his team. I was working in Tunisia <laughs> as a consultant, a senior consultant at African Development Bank in 2013, when he reached out to me across the oceans, or across the Sahara at least, to ask me to withdraw from that job and come and work with him as a Minister of Trade and Industry. So at the right time, I'm sure he would tell me what he wants me to do with him or for him. For him. But this mm -hmm. conversation I'm having with you, mm -hmm. am I not speaking about him, for him, and NDC? Well, well you are. I was <laughs> yeah, just... So there are many ways of contributing to the, and the I, campaign. And I agree with you. Don't you don't have to be given director of this. Secretary of that, for you to do your work. I'm doing my work. By February, we would hear of a running mate for the uh, flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama. That I, person, for example, will, as I assume, be a member of the campaign team. So here's where I'm going with that. Um, could, could you be in the running for that? Well, many, many Ghanaians have that view. I mean, those who have observed Ghana, observed uh, our politics, observed various personalities, people tell me that, yes, they tell me. Former presidents have told me that. But what, 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 what do you me. think? <laughs> President Mill said that to me. Um, so, and I'm also capable. I'm also ready. So it's a matter of his choice. If he chooses me, you, we'll all hear about it. You are he happy to be else, John uh, Mohammed. I've been running. a flag bearer candidate, the longest attempted flag bearer candidate of Ghana. You are not aware? Since I, 2006. I am. Yeah. So for, if for almost 20, well, 18 years or whatever, I have made myself known and available to lead our party and to lead Ghana. And I'm still here in Ghana, mm. even though I could be many other places, helping even in small programs like this. Not that your program is small, but I'm saying that in the nature of... Where the, you have been. Of, of, of things. Um, and, and, and I think I can only be uh, uh, accepted as somebody who is available to help. I'm, I have a public service mindset. I come from a family of public servants. They've served Ghana for over 100 years in many positions. I only came recently. Well, my life is, I'm 70 years old, so I've mm. been around for some time. But I also came to help. Mm. But public service is what we are known for. Could you be a better running mate than uh, Jean Nana Opokwajima? That, I, I'm sure you know, it's not a fair question. So it's not, I don't think it's a matter of better than anybody. Nana Popis, Nana Jane is a good friend, a powerful woman, great lady. It's up to the party and the flag bearer to examine the, you know, nuances of the 
um, electoral you know, permutations. So let me put it this way. We don't know who the running mate of Alaji Bawumia would be. NDC has selected his flag bearer. MPP have selected their flag bearer. All of a sudden, another person has shown up on the oh, new force. Indeed. Were you aware of new force two months ago? So somebody has just shown up. It changes the permutations. Um, if Kerejie Japan had won the MPP flag bearership, it may have changed the permutations. If Alan Tremantin had won, it would have changed the permutations. So in politics, as in soccer and other games, it's strategic. You have to, you know, bide your time, monitor what your opponents are doing, and see who best uh. when matched with you, will get you to the promised land. You're asking me if I could be such a candidate. I say yes, I could be a candidate. Uh. But there are 10 other fantastic people who all could be candidates, Obviously. including but, Nana Jean, professor. So, right, so, so I want us to talk about Prof a little bit. Okay. Um, in the 2020 elections, do you think Prof uh, drew in the numbers that you wanted well, for, saying, the, for the NDC? You're asking an unfair question, if you don't mind my saying so. Because you're asking me, could I be a candidate? I say I could be. You're asking me, what about the current or the last candidate who also could be a candidate? No, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm looking at the 2020 elections. Oh, yes. I know it's historical, but it's a, it's yes. a comment on a colleague. And I'm, and, I'm and not mm. willing and ready to make comments of that nature. I think she did what she could do, obviously. She was made a candidate as to why NDC lost that election. The last time we lost in... 20, well, the first time we lost in the multi-party system in 2000, when I was more or less the director of communication for Professor Tamils, I wrote a whole article on it. And I, I cited 20 reasons mm. why NDC lost the election. So it's, it's never one reason or the other. It's multifactorial, as social, social scientists would agree. Many factors. Mm. As you have said, you have dedicated a lot of your life coming back home yes. uh, to try and do At something. At great cost, I must say. Great cost. I, I great personal cost, yes. Uh, tell will me you, about that. Will you accept to leave a $10,000 a month salary, which is a publicly available information for mm. those who are interested at the time at the African Development Bank, to come to take $500 a month, which was the salary of a minister? That's you. I'm asking you because you are work, talking is, is, to are me. We, are we talking <laughs> about 1997? That is what I did. And I'm talking about financial loss, the opportunities that I've lost because of my passion and my dedication to my country and to my continent. Right. So I'm not just talking for the sake of talking. I've proven uh -huh. it several times. When President Mohammed told me to leave my job at African Development Bank again to come and serve as a minister, I had an idea of what minister's salary is where because I'd already endured that, you know, almost 15 years ago as a minister. 5% of what I earned is what I came to earn. And I didn't make it up by stealing and misbehaving. Has it been worth it? So I went to Grand Bank, I was any $18,000 then. I came to accept $2,000. So if you, as a newscaster and Ghanaians sitting, are listening and appreciating me for who I am and what I've done for my country, then they can reach the appropriate con conclusions. Has but is it, it worth it? No. But my view is that helping your country, I mean, <laughs> I think it's a, a Latin phrase was Dalce e uh, decorum est, pro patria mori. That is a, a Latin statement. That it is, it is uh, <laughs> I don't want to translate it inaccurately, but it is sweet and um, patriotic to die for one's, one's country. That was what a particular writer wrote in Latin some years ago. Um, but because I said my, public, my, my family has been a, a family of public servants, we go along to just save the public. We don't lord it over them. We are very humble people, even though not everybody understands it. Some people think because you're tall and big, you're not humble. Mm. But the humility comes from inside I and see. how you treat other people, how you work with them. So since 2006, you said, you've been trying to... Well, I've uh, been, I was a candidate for the NDC flag bearership in 2006. It's a fact. Right. And I was also a candidate in 2020. Mm. Uh, well, at least in the primaries, which I think ended in 2019. I see. What, a fact. What, why do you think you've never quite got there? Oh, it's a lot of self-analysis. Um, obviously, I haven't lived throughout in the country as some people have done. So the fact that I've also had an international career. I'm only one of maybe two or three Ghanaians that I've had the opportunity to work with four 
international organizations. So I've worked with the African Development Bank, as I said, it took some time. I've worked with the you know, African Development Bank, it took some time. Even anytime you're doing those things, for the world, the global community, or even for Africa, mm. you can't be in Ghana to be gaining the mileage of people knowing you and you're rubbing shoulders with others and setting up companies and whatever it takes to become better known. So that obviously would have been a detriment in a certain sense. And of course, as I'm also proving to you, even when I've had to come back, it's always at a, at a financial loss, not to the state, but to myself. You know, so that also then deprives me of, of different things that I could do. But um, the reasons that I've not won any of the flag bearership um, races are many. Um, they have always, there have also been better candidates and the timing has not always been good. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you watch P President Biden, <laughs> he's 80 years old and he could have been president maybe 20 years ago. But right. Th the right time comes for everybody and the, the right time for God is always the best. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not my time yet. In 2018, yes. you said you had not endorsed any candidate, including John Romani Mahama. Correct. It's something you At that time, I don't even decided to run. He Indeed. Didn't it's something you, you had reiterated in 2022. Okay. But in 2023, like you're saying, yes. you seem to have endorsed Mahama. What, have ch what has changed over the period? A number of things, again. Um, well, I worked with President Mahama when, as Minister of Communications, he was Deputy Minister. So we worked very closely together. So we have a good working relationship. And we are still friends to today. We never had a squabble that I can remember in those days. And we be became jointly cabinet ministers. I was in charge of education. He was in charge of communication. In the party hierarchy as well, I was the first to go into the party hierarchy after we lost 2000 elections and became what today we call director of communications or national press officer. The work that Sami Jamfi does, which I, I think all of your audience know about. Mm. I did that for two years. Um, and then President Mahama took over from me in the National Democratic Congress inside the party. So we both have inside the party experience. And as I've just said, after we lost the election and we then won it in 2009, uh, 2008, and President Mills became president, I wasn't given uh, an appointment immediately or even at all in the uh, NDC government. But President Mama reached out to me mm -hmm. while I was at the African Development Bank to, to work with him. So, he actually declared, or his family declared in 2017, that President Mama will not be a candidate for the 2020 election. And that is when some friends of mine began to get agitated and to contact me and to find out, well, if President Mama is not going, you have to have a candidate. You tried to be a candidate in 2006, so why don't you start leasing your boots to come up, come back? So we, that's what we did. Started leasing our boots, talking to people and organizing and getting ready. And then he decided to become a candidate. And so it was a little difficult because at that time we had kind of invested too much time and energy in it and my, my team just didn't want to withdraw. Or, Did you feel betrayed at that point? Oh, no. He no. Said, he said, has a right, like anybody else, to present himself. Right, no betrayal, no sense mm. of betrayal at all. Mm. He had a right to pre present himself. And then other candidates also but, had... But you must have been disappointed that, you know, after uh, no, all he, that had... He has to examine his life and his potential. He has experience that I don't have. He has been president before. Mm. He has told some people, even when he was president, that you, some of them have been having been president before. That was Akufado at that time. Mm -hmm. And so he, couldn't, he didn't think Akufado should make certain statements that he was making when he had never been president. Mm. So that statement is valid. If you have never been something before, those who have had that pres opportunity mm. have a higher you know, level of experience than you do. So I respect that. That at all times, President Mama will have a higher level of experience than I have had in governance of Ghana. But he may not have had experience working in an international organization, for example. He may not have had experience being a chief of staff of a church, which I've had, or a president of a university, which I've had. So different experiences. Mm. And you have to respect everybody's So, So, so last year you changed your mind. As far as what? You, no, I didn't change I, my well, mind. Well, not change your I mind. I've always last been an NDC member. I understand. It's only a matter of who NDC will choose to be a flag bearer. You can be a candidate and you lose. I, didn't, I was the only one who lost that election. All of us, seven, six, or six, seven of us, Bakbin was a candidate, he lost. Joshua Arabi was a candidate, he didn't make it. Simon was a candidate. So we all lost together to mm -hmm. him. And we accepted that. And, and we campaigned for him. And you campaigned for yes, him. And we right. did that. Right. So um, let, let's, let's assess the, you, you know, the candidates of 2024, John Dramani Mahama. Very good. I mean, 
what, what kind of a candidate are we presenting now? Does he have what, to take, what it takes to win the 2024 election? Let's not forget that in 2020, I mean, yeah. he lost the election. And despite in 2020, all the he efforts. lost the election, and even though all the evidence as such is not out, and even though we went to court on that matter, many of us are, are, are aware, and even MPP guys keep talking about it sometimes, no in nuances, that they did certain things to make us lose. Okay, um, I was not in the so-called strong room. Um, those who went and drank tea and didn't get biscuits and all that came in the you know, Supreme Court to tell us what happened. But it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm saying there are many reasons. I have identified 20 reasons when NDC has lost in, 20, in 2000. So 2020 election, if somebody were to analyze it, there'll be 15, 17 reasons we may have lost. Because Ibuchi actually had a committee that went through why we lost the 2016 election. Mm. They wrote a fine report. Some of us believe that the fact that that report has never been properly shared in a certain way without disclosing people's identity and without you know, making people uncomfortable is part of why we haven't learned from our mistakes. Because any examination you go to, if your teacher tells you you got 10 questions, well, out of 10 questions, you only got six right. You are interested in the four you didn't get right. At least that has been my attitude in the classroom. And I focus on the four that I didn't get right and make sure I get them right. And I'm not sure NDC has learned sufficiently from those errors that they have, we have made in the past. Mm. Um, we have always had problems with our um, collation of results, for example. So I, hear, I know the Secretary General has been on various television stations talking about the fact that we did not have our results right. collated for whatever reasons. We have heard of our computers crashing you know, in the middle of a, an election. And then there have been, you know, back and forth, you know, blame of this person or that person in the national elections directorate, the IT directorate, and all that. Well, those, okay, are, those, those, are, those, those are internal matters. Uh -huh. But I'm saying that they have, they've become publicly known. Yes. There are some of the reasons why we have not done as well in some elections as we could have. So those, those are really important matters that right. you have yes, raised. Sure. Uh, you know, the party is already aware of these Correct. things. Correct, yes. But you are, not, you are not learning the lessons to rectify them. I believe uh, so we are speak. learning the lessons, but I'm saying because we didn't learn them well in the past, then no, we for, end for up For the 2024 up elections, do you think those lessons are, are, are Learning is a, long, is, a continuous process, is a continuous process. So we are still learning. Even today, we are still learning. Mm. People listening to me hopefully will learn something. Um, and I'm always happy to learn from others. But I think that the major problems that we must have had have been fixed in terms of even the composition of our national executive committee at the party headquarters, the leadership we had at the time. We have a new secretary general. The secretary general has moved on to become a chairman of the party. Others have been recruited as national organizer, etc. Mm. Do you we think want... the, the current crop of leaders can deliver the 2024 elections? The crop of leaders of NDC can deliver a good election at any time if the spate of robbery, electoral robbery, um, either at the constituency level, at the regional level, or at the national level in the Electoral Commission, if intimidation by law enforcement agencies are completely overcome and, and, and done away with, if um, foreign institutions that are supposed to help us to you know, manage our elections properly also stand their ground and provide the appropriate support at the right time, if the other institutions of governance and a long list, I read some of them out earlier, all work well, and this issue win, no doubt. And all the polls, Ghana has not been traditionally been used to opinion polls. Mm. And some believe in them, some do not. But I come from a background of statistical information and analysis and all that, so I believe in most polls. And I've cited the Global Analytics as a company whose polls are very Ghanaian focused and generally believable. Mm. And they are, they are putting Bahama as ahead of Baumia by a margin of 50 to... Do, do you find that... 54% uh, and Baumia is below 30% for you, some polls, mm, yes. Do you find that the NDC could struggle in its, uh, what they call the World Bank, the Volta region, given events of, of, sure. of recent? Yeah, but part of the e recent events were the people of the, what do you call SAL, S-A-L-L, mm. the particular subcategory who they were not even given a chance to vote in the last election, and must insist, we must insist that mm. whatever you know, electoral reforms or administrative errors took place that or deliberate 
sabotage took place that did not allow those people to vote, they are fully Ghanaians. They should be given that right in this election. And we expect the Electoral Commissioner to vote, to pledge 100% that Sal will vote in the 2024 election. Now, there's also a group of Ghanaians outside the country mm -hmm. um, who, under the ROPA bill, were supposed to be registered and to, and to vote. And up to now, to the best of our knowledge, Ghanaians outside Ghana are still not registered to vote. Should there be a strategy difference given the new entrance into the elections? Uh, Such as the, the butterfly force, movement, Alan Sherman, mosquitoes and butterflies, yes. and uh, new force. Should there be mm. strategy difference uh, now that we have these oh, yes, new Yes, absolutely. No. So, um, a certain group that will be looking at these strategic issues, I'm happy to join any such groups. I've not been invited to, but groups that have certain responsibilities will obviously look at all these, and there will be new others coming up. We don't know who they are. The Liberal Party, often we don't hear about them until elections, then they have posters and flyers, mostly in Accra, and that's about it. Um, we, we don't know who else will be filing. I don't know what the deadlines but, but are for creating new, a party. Could, could they, they will not get more than collectively 5%. You think so? All those small, small parties. I'm sorry, my own brother and friend, Alasha Martin, butterflies, mosquitoes, they will not get uh, collectively so, so no real more impact. than five percent. We are a two-party nation, unfortunately. Should the NP the NDC be considering alliances? I think so. All the time, you need you, you, you oh, even three votes. You need everybody's family, everybody's. Oh no, I'm a strong advocate for alliances. Which Ghana may have ten parties now vying for the next election. There's PNC, there's Mosquito or um, the Butterfly Party. There's the New Force. Yeah. You should have alliances, yes. New force? Well, uh, it doesn't matter. If it's a matter of believing in similar, you know, philosophy. That's really what it should be the case. Not so much in the personalities. But yes, where, where somebody is friendly to another person in party A, you can send those who are friendly to that party to talk to them and find out how can we work together. Because it, we are going to be in power, I, I expect and believe. If Alan Chiamatin knows that, and even he expects to be in power, it's in his own interest to have a discussion which says, look, just in case I don't win, I hope we can work together in this way. Nothing, nothing more, should help stop him from doing that. More on the elections and your thoughts about new force movement when we come back. Don't go sure. Ahead. What are your thoughts, Doc, about the new force movement and how they have just popped up onto the scene? Well, Mr. Kami Bidiakun, who actually is a good friend and a neighbor, um, I think it's an interesting addition to the um, political structure and system and potential of Ghana. So I don't begrudge his entry in the political race at all. I think it, it sharpens the, you know, the decision-making process and the preparatory process for all of us who are, who are in politics that, oh, here are new entrants. They may be smarter, they may be sharper, they may be more nimble. A, a soccer team that has, look at the, in the, the Africa Cup. Countries that were not being heralded, whether it's Cape Verde, whether it's Mozambique, whether it's Namibia, are doing better than is expected. So it is possible for these newer parties or in, newer individuals. I, I, I hear Mr. Bidiakou say he doesn't have a party yet. Yes. He's a movement of sorts. Um, but I guess he wants to move towards the political party arrangement. Even well, though, he said you know, he's being frustrated. Well, but also that also, but you, you can't say, you, you can't be surprised by that. I mean, the party you are trying to overthrow, from the NPP's point of view, it is not NDC which is in power, which Bedea Queen is coming to overthrow or replace. It is MPP that see him as a threat. So they are the ones who are taking actions against his, you know, producer and his uh, external partners and the one who puts out the billboard and whatever they are doing and, and stopping his stadium or his black independent square. Union with some African, you know, Pan Africanists, mm. etc. It's the government of Ghana doing that, using national security and all kinds of bad boys hiding in the, in, in the background. Mm. Um, but nevertheless, I'm sure he will still prevail because his billboards are all over the country. I think he says there are over 100 billboards that he's put up. So that's a very impressive investment in the political process. Um, and of course, he has a number of companies that generate revenue for him. What do you think but about it? But IRS message? also is looking for him to pay taxes. So obviously the, the government is looking at all kinds of weaknesses that he may have to weaken him further, uh -huh. as they've done to many NDC people over the years. So it's, it's a war of attrition. The way MPP operates 
politics. It's a, a war of attrition and a zero sum game for them. But the NPP has done that to NPP many has NDC done members. that to many and like members who? and their businesses. Oh, or which al almost, business? almost everybody you can think about. Almost every, uh, unless they don't know you're an NDC person. If you are an NDC person, you have any kind of business, they make sure that it doesn't prosper. It, has it, have you been affected by that? I won't personalize it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not identifying individuals, but I know as a part, it's their, their mindset. It's just a mindset and they implement it in that, in that, in that way. Mm. Um, no, when, didn't you hear even DH Mesa, who is departed, saying that saying somewhere in the 19, the 20s, 2020s, that by the time they had finished with NDC, NDC will not be able to win any election in Ghana. You were one of those people who pioneered the implementation of VAT Very true. Uh, in, in the country. Very Today, true. as you rightly said, we are looking at 15% of VAT in this country. But yes. it's also going beyond that to charge it on electricity usage Very for true. users above lifeline. What are your thoughts about this move that the government is trying to make? Well, a bankrupt government will naturally look for resources and revenue from anywhere they can find it. So they look for it usually in the ports where some kind of revenues come. They'll look for it from real estate transactions. They'll look for it direct from us through taxation, direct taxation, as they're doing with the VAT. And there's a long list of sources of revenue. You know, any public accountant or public finance person knows what the list is. And they'll look at all the list and see what the rate is today. Can we add something to it? Can we do? So they are doing that. They do that routinely. Mm. Um, and so we should expect that. But is that what is going to fix the economy? What the main problem with Ghana's economy is not how much money the government can raise, which it does to some extent and not to, to another extent, but it's what amount of government, money government should not spend. It's expenditure management and not you know, revenue generation. Government it's justification for this is so that poor, they can pay no, 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 it's the energy to do. sector debts. Well, <laughs> energy sector debts, is that why you brought PDS? It was a, a PDS was just a, a concoction to make some more money through the back door. And then the other recent one, uh, on the other G hand, uh, with the a GRE, LMS or something. SML. SML, they, all these acronyms. Uh, on the uh, other hand, all, they man, blame <laughs> the uh, take or pay. They will blame anything. The, the take or pay yes. contracts signed under the Mahama administration. That produced, but that produced power for us. That produced power for all of us to enjoy and benefit and to, you know, propel our industries to produce goods and services. Have they canceled take or pay, I mean, contracts as a principle? Have you heard that take or pay has been cancelled as a policy measure? I haven't heard it. Have you by any chance? So they are also implementing take or pay. In fact, I think one of the um, power projects that they wanted to renegotiate, and this is what I think led to the resignation of Mr. Ajakun, um, Chairman Tim, who, who was minister, if you remember. But yes. on power or yes. electricity. Mm -hmm. It's not something only Ghana wants to do or is doing. It's something that is also done in other places around the world. All so countries. how is this one different? Why don't you support this? I haven't studied that particular policy initiative. So I really will not like to comment on something I've not studied. Yeah. I've heard about it and we are all paying for it. Um, I'm not sure if they've started implementing it yet. Um, but of course, if you increase the VAT uh, that is, a, is a, a tax on consumption of various goods in an, in an economy. And so the principle of whether electricity should be taxed or not, I can't argue against that principle, that electricity should not be taxed because it's a social good. Or if you have water, it should not be taxed. Tax um, experts and governments will like to tax anything and everything that moves. Sometimes they exclude food, they exclude medicine, um, yeah, I think so, I mean, they, so, they, so they excluded recently um, in the high, you know, fem female hygiene products, etc., etc. Yeah. But generally, the idea is to tax everything that, can, that moves at all. Um, but I'm saying that it, the taxation is one thing. The consumption and the misbehavior when the money is made available is the worst part. And one of the things that finance minister Oferata did very early in the government, I think within the first three months, was to put in place a, a revenue measure that allowed only 30% or so of all the statutory um, revenue sources, road fund, tourism fund, education fund, et cetera, 
70% was to come to him as a finance minister to manage. Mm -hmm. And only 30% went to those statutory funds. And those statutory funds have been struggling since then. This is Assembly's Common Fund, struggling. Ghana Education Trust Fund, which I created during my time. It's what they've banked, you know, they've mortgaged with, a, I believe, a Chinese company. So whatever money comes in there, they just pay the Chinese company. They've mortgaged everything that can be mortgaged. I see. But you know, as they've taken future money, future revenues, and taking the money out today. Since, since you have brought to up... To consume. Yes, I want please. us to um, talk about the education sector now. Yes. Um, government has increased access to uh, secondary education. We are also seeing improvement at the basic level. Which improvement? Uh, improvement in numbers. Of numbers why, why are you surprised? No, I don't know which, what message... There have been improvement in numbers at the basic of level. Of how many people have been enrolled. Yeah, have, have enrolled. Okay, so that's not, it's not population growth generated because there's no free primary school uh, but that's policy, for example, that they are, they are implemented and aware of. So it's just normal population growth is what they're talking about but, but that's, at primary school level. Or, so, so that is not an achievement that the government has been well, able to if, make it... No, I'm saying that whatever policy has existed, and access, no, whatever policy has been existed from my time as Minister of Education, mm. is the same policies they are implementing, except the ones that are abusive and not helpful. But in terms of um, primary education, as I'm saying, primary education has always been free. Mm -hmm. We had free, compulsory, universal, basic education. That's F cube. Yeah. So the policy since P and D C time was to make education, the first nine years of education, free and compulsory. Now it is SHS, which follows the primary, the primary and secondary, primary and um, junior high school education yeah. that they made, they made free. Yeah. So I want us, I want so us to... So the rest has been the same, except population growth, <laughs> which will change things. And they are saying so that it's they not could, because the government is doing anything no, special. They, like they, they, they are, they should tell us that you know, if they are telling parents to make sure children go to school, they should stop fishing and farming. Okay, then maybe that's what they're doing that we may not be aware of. But so I was going to graduate yes. this conversation on quality at the basic level and Very what good. you think about it. No, what, I, what we are hearing from experts is that they have promoted and supported free senior high school at the detriment to the detriment of primary school um, schools where textbooks are not available, where classroom buildings are not built, new, um, there's no real growth and expansion at that level. That's what has, as Kans, I was wondering what you're talking about when you're talking about basic education having been improved. Mm. Because what we hear, and I'm not a minister of education now, so I'm not privy to the raw numbers other than what some of you may report, is that the primary sec school system and junior high school system have suffered to make up, because the budget is still the budget of Ghana. And the budget is the same bankrupt budget we are talking about. It's not as if the country has made so much more money. And so well, things have been allocated I, I differently. I mean, when you read the 2022 or 2021 USAID report on USAID report on education, it acknowledges some of the improvement in, you know, the... the it would be very surprising if any international organization comes to Ghana to write a report on anything where it will not acknowledge what progress there is. This a standard procedure. So as, it's nothing. As, as a, in a research, no, it's, as a researcher... And as a, as a policymaker going into any country, especially one with which you have bilateral relations, you remember mm -hmm. as ambassador to the United States, so the USAID is a kind of organization I know somewhat well. They will have to write in a report. So if, if you look at 20 chapters, you will see a section that talks about the improvements that Ghana has made mm. over a certain period. But if you read another chapter or the next chapter, they will tell you the problems that have, been, have worsened. So I don't know what you are reading. I don't, we don't have the, te the textbook here. I'm just explaining that I'm not surprised that you get such paragraphs in any report of any international organization. I work for four of them. Well, but so I, I you mean, will have to read I'm, the I'm whole also, report. I'm also surprised uh -huh. about your comments on, the, on basic education particular because we have an education minister who came into the country from the U.S. also with a lot of dreams and a lot of visions. He had told us about the things he wanted to do, digitalize education even. You are telling me you are not seeing any of those? Well, I'm not in a primary school or secondary school, and I'm not also in well, the ministry. But, but, but you have the, uh, your education organization. You must have correct, seen correct. things across. Uh, yeah, so I'm saying that the information we have, and I think the, the over 100 um, civil society organizations that double or relate to the educational system, they put out various reports 
I think Education Watch and other mm -hmm. such organizations. Very well. And the report that they put out suggests that Ghana's primary and junior high school systems mm -hmm. have suffered adversely, partly because of the of focus free. on the senior high school edu Has education. Has the free senior but high school lived up to expectation? Is it working for the Ghanaian people? Well, the first thing is that it is not as free as people had thought it would be. Why? If you have a child in secondary school right now, or your brother or sister or nephew, ask them for the list that the school is sending them, which requires them to bring a bucket and bring a cutlass and to bring a rake and a broom, all kinds of things that were never before part of what any student is had it, to is take. Is it not because the, to, the head teachers themselves are doing that? It's not because the ministry to, is... The head teacher dare not to do it under this administration. How many of teachers being sacked and dismissed for any small infractions? These are the most highly controlled Ministry of Education or Government of Ghana policy as far as education is concerned. They are not allowing headmasters to have any freedom at all. I went to speak to the conference of headmasters of assisted secondary schools at the latest conference in Achimota, and the language there from the participants was one of almost, uh, you know, how to live within a dictatorship within the educational system. That's how they see it. Really? I'm, I'm not a teacher, I'm not education minister, but those who are in it say there's hardly any room to maneuver. You know, if the finance minister himself says that, look, he should have the right to pay for his own child's education. Finance minister of Ghana, Kenneth Ferrata, but his cabinet, including the president, tell them, no, you can't do it because we are not allowing parents to support their own children's education. What kind of, forgive me to say, the English word would be rubbish. Would that be? The parent wants to help his own child's education, but he doesn't want to necessarily pay to the government, which will steal it. Mm. So he says, look, my child is going to secondary school through parent teachers. Do you know why they have suspended or abolished parent teacher associations, which have existed in Ghana for over 50 they, they, years? They said they wanted to be autonomous. Who said that? The, Who said that? The, Who said that? The parents the said that? From the mm. press release, oh, they please. wanted to be independent <laughs> which, of the which schools. Which parent has said that? Uh, so what the, the ministry so wants it to be, the yeah, education why, why services they, no, wants yeah, it to be so they, the, you know, independent so the of the schools. Yeah, so the government is the one who says they want the parents to be independent. What does independent mean? They don't want the parents and the teachers to work together in the common interest of well, the students they, they and the pupils. They can work together, but when it comes that? to How issues of fundraising and projects, you know, they so, want to... So you don't banish the parent teacher associations. You just change the rules, if that's what you want to do, that there shall be parent teacher associations. But when... Schools want to raise funds for projects. The parents should do this, and the teachers should do that, and the, and the students should do whatever. I Colleagues. see you think this could cause some problems. Uh, it's causing the problems already. It's not it could cause problems. It is a big problem already in Ghana. That the parents who have... Where, where do you think government collects taxes from? Do you know, you know where government collects taxes from? Taxes. Where do government collect from? From the people. Yeah, from the people. And the same people from who you collect taxes, who say that, look, we know you're collecting taxes from us, and we are struggling with our taxes. Mm -hmm. But please allow us in this secondary school, in the other secondary school, to contribute voluntarily to our own children's education. You say, no. What common sense does that make? Maybe because... Some I, I'm really yet to understand the common sense. Perhaps Sorry about because that. some people take advantage of that. Oh, yes, there'll be abuses. Mm -hmm. But there are no abuses going on in the, in the government, even without parenting associations. So if you want to prevent abuses, then stop corruption in Ghana. Why did you sack Domelovo, who was just simply trying to do his work and insist on things being done right? Why did Matinami do resign and call the president and the presidency the mother serpent of corruption? I mean, the language, mother serpent of corruption. I didn't know corruption was even a serpent. But that's Matinami do's language. You so these so things are all going on right now. And the, there are over 100 incidents and cases of corruption and abuse of office in this current administration. Even Ajabin Kisi, the special prosecutor, is complaining. Mm. That he's not it, getting the right support Doc, and all that. Doc, is there any hope for Get Fund? Well, of course, and the new government, you have to unravel whatever took place with the Chinese and get it on its normal feet. I mean, you, you know of international agreements more than I do. Sure. Uh, how easy will that be? Every international agreement can be cancelled, can be abolished, can be modified. It's an agreement. Every agreement, whether international or local, mm. can, are all subject to change at any time. And the, Clauses are in the agreement. If you want to change this agreement, do this, do that. Your rental agreement, same thing. Your agreement with your employer, same thing. Every agreement anywhere 
is subject to change, modification, and to nullification, abolishing, whatever. So when NDC comes to power, we shall examine all agreements, including many that have been signed improperly, mm -hmm. and people are leaking money out of the national coffers. I see. And make sure that things are done correctly. National Cathedral. But your good friend was a member of the board. Your good friend, uh, Papa, Archbishop oh, yes. Duncan He's Williams. my spiritual father, yes. Yes. But he has left, has resigned. Uh, but did you say in, anything in to him? In frustration and fun, in anger. Did you say anything <laughs> to him from the, from the get-go when have, he I didn't have to up. say anything to him because I, I wasn't party to the discussions he had uh. with the government which offered him that role. Mm. If you're not aware of what the behind the scenes and even the official agreements are. You can't make serious comments. Have you so I give him a chance to mm -hmm. do what he had to do. And when he realized that it was a waste of his time, he made it clear together okay. with several other pastors. Oh, well, there's no pastor with any seriousness Did, who is on that committee. Has he mentioned to you what, what it was that <laughs> broke his back as far as the cathedral is concerned? Well, I will um, report what I would consider as confidential um, conversation with anybody. But I think the generality of the pastors and bishops felt that transparency was not available and good governance was mm. not in place. And of course, you, you know about the cases involving Okujetua Blackwa and particular officers of the secretariat who have offices in the pres president's so office. you think that those must have played a role in all this of, decision? All of that, a sense of we I have see. been deceived. We have not been, we're not being told the truth. And, you know, we are being used. I see. I'm sure that all of that will be part of what many of the bishops and pastors and archbishops have felt. One last one before we go. Atukujo was your MP, and I made him a deputy minister, and you voted him out in the last elections. And because of that, I did not pay attention to development in your area. I'm glad you already know this. this but this is President Akufuado in 2024. He had made mention, you know, he had said uh, something similar uh, when region. he visited, you know, the yeah, affected So you can see that the person, if this statements are true. It only points out to the vindictiveness of the individual. If that's the thinking process, that you didn't do this for me, I won't do this for you. In Volta region, you didn't do this for me, I won't do this for you. In Central region, if that is true, I'm saying it's a if, then it just points out to the person as a highly vindictive person. Well, so he said it. So well, then... I'm not the reporter, you think, but you we, think are, the we are reading it. president is vindictive? If these things are true, and it's unfortunate. I was, and you, I should, you should avoid saying such things. I wasn't His advices should tell him to, not to say that. Right. His lovely wife, Rebecca, should tell him not to say such things. I wasn't His council of state should tell him not to say such things. It's unbecoming of any president to sound vindictive that I did this because of you and this. No, it's not worth it. Aren't all politicians like that? Well, and some politicians are more like that. Donald Trump, we've all heard him insult people, insult people, insult people. And your mama, where did he say things like that? That I, you didn't do this for me, so I won't do this for you. I don't think even President Rollins ever thought along those lines. President Rollins was a highly nationalistic person who just wanted the, for the whole country to move ahead. He put us as ministers in the gutters of Nima to clean, to set the good example of what leaders should do. But other leaders don't think <laughs> their cabinet ministers should, should come from, down from their Range Rovers and Land Cruisers and do any work that really saws the hand. But Rollins was a different President, he had cocoa sacks on his back when Ghana couldn't get his cocoa to the ports. Right. As an example for everyone else to you know, pull us through. So when your country is in debt, as Ghana is, is, is in now, you, ha you need an all-hands-on-board approach. But if the Bank of Ghana, which is helping to manage our debts, has a Bank of Ghana headquarters building that they tell us publicly is 80 million, and by the time the construction begins, unless I'm wrong, has now jumped through, through 250 to 300 million, and may go higher, then we lose sense of where we are. Because there are few people that ought to be holding the fort and insisting on some transparency, some you know, good governance, both in parliament, in the executive branch, and outside, are not living up to our collective expectation. So it's not, it's not my issue. It's Talk. all of us who are in this pot together. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us today on Hot Issues. I'm Kemeni Amana. I'll see you same time next week. Bye-bye.